Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ratting Road. In past videos, you may have heard me talk about GC Weathering. Uh, they're a company and in the name, obviously, they specialise in weathering locos and rolling stock, and also just detailing them up a little bit as well. This video is dedicated to them. I'm going to be taking a closer look in detail at some of my rolling stock and locos, etc. And just showing you guys the quality that they could do, uh, the services they provide, etc. Because I'm just over the moon with what they've done for me over the time I've been a modeler. So I'm just giving back to them really more than anything because I feel like it's only fair. And I'm a big, big believer in giving credit when it's due. So if you're someone like me that hasn't got the courage yet to go near your models with an airbrush or a paintbrush to do your own weathering, then this video is for you. Obviously, if you if you are a modeler that does that type of thing, then I take my hat off to you. But as I said, then this is more dedicated to those who are yet to get to that point. Uh, just before I get into the video, I'm just going to make a quick point that GC Weathering didn't ask me to do this. It's purely me out of my own goodwill. Um, I wasn't paid or nothing like that. It's just, like I said, me believing that they deserve it completely. So without further ado, I'm just going to get straight into the video and I hope you enjoy watching it. So just to kick the video off, just a little bit of history about the company itself. Um, GC Weathering, they have been going for a good 25 years off the top of my head. So they've definitely got the experience behind them. Um, the photos they post on their social media certainly speak for themselves, but honestly, their pictures do not do justice at all. And even this video probably won't do them justice either. Well, I know, I know it won't, but what you can see in front of you is one of my Batman Class 66s, and this is one of the locos that they have works their magic on. So when it comes to weathering the locos, you get a choice between light, medium and heavy weathering. And then obviously the heavier you go, then the more you pay for it. And then within that price as well, you basically have a pick and choose kind of system. So you can have different elements of details added to the model when it comes to weathering it. Um, I'll show the details what this model has uh, shortly. Uh, this particular model has been weathered up to a medium state. So I'm just going to try and gently now pan along the model just so you can get an idea on how it looks. Now I'm at the front of the loco and I'm just going to start uh, highlighting areas that they can add to. Um, some things that jump out straight away are the grease marks on the buffers. So they can add those and also the wipe marks as well. Um, obviously they've done that really, really nicely and they always follow the uh, correct sort of uh, directions of the wipers. Uh, they good they obviously work off real pictures and also at the bottom you can see how the medium weathering looks more better because obviously it's uh, facing against the yellow rather than the dark bogies. And just looking at the roof, they can add the diesel exhaust pigment, which is all this black ram on the tops of the roof. And then they can also add rusty exhausts as well. And also they do just highlight the little grooves and get dirt in the corners. It doesn't pick that up very well, but they do go over the entire model. And then coming down, looking at the sides, so to this model, they added the zero injuries decal, which is the one to the right next to the driver window. Uh, they appear on pretty much every Freightliner loco now, I believe. So it was uh, important to have that put on there. Another thing they did was they renumbered this loco. So they can also, they also offer a renumbering service along with a rename service. So the nameplate on this model is Hanjin Express. And then the other side, it's Senator Express. This model was uh, 66612. I've briefly talked about that before. So it was, uh, I did say I did want it renumbered and renamed. So they got, they done that for me as well. And obviously done that to a real high standard. The loco numbers aren't wonky at all. And uh, no leaking glue marks coming out from the nameplates either, which was really good to look at. And then they also painted the ladders yellow as well. And that was a real nice touch of them, I think. I didn't even ask them to do that. They just done it for me. So um, yeah, thanks for doing that. And obviously they'll always pick out the little bits of detail that they need 
that they can correct and do it all for you as well within the price. And then on the other end of the loco now, they've pretty much done the same on this side. The only thing they didn't do was a detail kit. The wiper marks and the greasy buffers also appear on this side as well. So they do cover the whole model. They don't leave no um, corner untouched or whatever you want to call it. So I'm really happy with what they've done to this model. It certainly looks like a model now rather than a toy. And that's obviously a big important thing for model railways for me. So I've spoken about this model and I'm now going to put this away and show you my next one that they've done, which is another Backman 66. So this next low curry 66614, they've weathered this low curry up to a lighter weathering state. And if I just pan out a little bit, you can see the difference between a light and a medium weathering. So obviously the one on the left, the medium weathered low curry, the greens and the yellows are noticeably darker. So obviously pretty much what you'd expect between light and medium weathering. And obviously the bokeys are cleaner as well. So what they've done detailed to this model is again, greasy buffers and the wiper marks on the driver's side, the zero injury decal, uh, the diesel exhaust pigment and the rusty exhaust and the fitting the name plates as well. So pretty much the same what they've done on the other one, but obviously the medium weathering on top. So it's obviously noticeably different. And another 66 is 66418. I won't show you what they've done to this because it's pretty much what they've done to the other two. The only thing they did differently and another service they add is they can add or detail the cabs. So in this particular instance, they added a driver and a second man. And you can just see the second man there reading a newspaper and have his um, feet up on the tops of the controls. And then, of course, you've got the driver on the right hand side there you go so that you can get a better view of them there so that's just another service they can add um, again this model is lightly weathered so pretty much the same standard as the previous 66 And now moving on to some of my more favourable traction, the Class 90s. So my Freightliner Powerful Class 90, 90042. This has been weathered up to a light weathering state. Obviously electric locos don't tend to get as dirty as diesels do. So you notice the grime on the bogies and the underframe. And they also put some grime into the grills on the sides. So in terms of the little extras, they've done the greasy buffers as standard. So if I just come a bit closer and then they also added the overhead warning flashes, which for some reason didn't come with the any of the class 90s, which I thought was quite surprising because they normally don't leave those out. And then they also added the zero injuries decal as well to bring it up to date. And then another thing they did, again, another matter of painting um, details. They painted the little rails at the top there. I can't remember the real correct name for them. The good thing is with GC weathering is that they are familiar with uh, obviously the real railways and what colours of what. 
they have got um, good knowledge behind them, which is always a good bonus. So they painted the roof detail and the pantograph to look less toy-like, which was good. And then last but not least, my absolute pride and joy on the layout at the moment is 9047 in the original Freightliner grey livery. I've saved this till last because it's my absolute favourite at the moment. So what they've done to this is they've weathered it up really, really well to a medium weathered state. So you can really see the level of grime along the sides, which is what the real Freightliner grey 90s have. Uh, sadly, they're not in, kept as good in, in good condition as the racing green and powerful livery versions. So as well as the grime on the sides, you can also see the same level of grime on the bogies as well. And then looking at the front, the greasy buffers again, and the overhead flashes and the zero, zero injury decal. So I've talked about the renumbering and the renaming, but they can also rebrand locos as well. So this was originally my uh, rail freight distribution class 90 and they rebranded that to Freightliner of course and they've done that to a real high standard as well really nicely a little detail is the old mark where the old depot plaque would have been that was a real good touch of them again another example of how they go the extra mile and put all the little details on and then they again weathered the pants graph and the roof detailing again and then another thing they did was paint the uh, window surrounds black. The, uh, rail fr the rail freight distribution one came with yellow ones. And again, adding all the correct decals that unfortunately Backman decided to leave out. So th this model, again, is certainly a work of art, in my opinion, a GC special. It's not just locos, it is rolling stock as well that they'll weather. And in this particular case, they've weathered one of my Network Rail Mark 3s. I actually bought this from a friend who had it weathered by GC Weathering, so I guess it was still worth showing. But as you can see, they have added the grime along the bottoms of the coach, all the grime and the dirt, and on the uh, bogies and the under frame as well. And of course, to a high standard once again. And then here is one of my container wagons that they've weathered, a Hornby KFA. Uh, I bought this wagon at an exhibition and it had dreadful weathering on it when I bought it. So I got GC just to clean it all up and go over it. And they, so they will do that if required. They will weather over existing weathering or just remove it depending on what's necessary. And of course, container wagons get extremely dirty in real life. So they've really grimed up this wagon. So when you consider that uh, the Hornby KFA is blue, um, you really get an idea on how much this has been weathered. And of course, still to a high standard where I was really happy with it. And then the container on top of it has also been weathered by them. So they will weather the loads or the containers or whatever will come with your wagons, obviously depending on what you want doing. And again, to a high standard. So I'm really happy with how they done my wagons. So yes, it's not just locos that they do, they will weather your other types of rolling stock too. Okay, so there we go. So the only thing I haven't really talked about yet is the pricing. I personally do believe it is very reasonably priced considering the amount of work that goes into doing it. So I'm just going to say the price of the Class 90 in front of you. Um, so for the medium weathering, the renumber from 037 to 047, the livery change to Freightliner, the zero injuries and the OHLE flashes added, that which were the decals, and to paint the buzz bar, which was the bit at the top of the 90 that I couldn't really remember earlier on, and the greasy buffers, and to model the old depot, depot plaques, which is this bit. That was a grand total of £57. So that gives an idea on what to expect. Um, obviously, because this model did have quite a bit of work put into it, that is why it is what it is. 
Um, my other class 90, 042, and the light weathering was £30, and the, t and the zero injuries and OHLE flashes were £2, and then the um, greasy buffers and the buzz bar was free of charge, so it's all that's, that's all included in the price, and that was £32. So, of course, depending on how much work you have done, the price or the cost will be more. But at the end of the day, I'm really, really happy with the end result, so I will. I do think it's very reasonably priced. So there we go. I've pretty much covered everything and I've showed close up pictures and videos of uh, the models that they've worked on. And throughout the video, I hope you can see why I'm as happy as I am with them. I personally think their weathering is far beyond anything else I've seen by other companies. So I definitely don't have any other reason to go elsewhere. If you are interested in seeing more of GC Weathering's work, then you can head on over to their website and Facebook page. I'll leave both links in the description below. Obviously, do check them out. I really highly recommend them. So that's pretty much it. I've covered everything and the video has more or less come to an end. If you are interested in particular in seeing my two Class 90s running with their pantographs up, uh, I did have a running session with them recently when I first received them back. So that was very fun to film. I'll leave a pop-up in the corner now and you can go through to that if you just want to watch a running session with them. But apart from that, that's pretty much the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Take care, guys, and happy modelling. Bye.